Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Boruto anime review. This one's going to be for episode 121, which is called The Entrusted Mission, Protect the One Tails. And yeah, this was an interesting episode, uh, continuing on this arc that has got a lot of people's attention because they suddenly dropped us into Urashiki versus Gara and Sasuke, and Sasuke's been disappeared um, into a different dimension. So what do we do here? Gara is powerful, but enough to take on an Otsutsuki basically all by himself? Not quite, but this is when we get the idea here at the start of this episode that Shukaku arrives. So just his appearance I think is a really, really cool thing because like the tail beasts in general haven't really been addressed all that much. Kurama a little bit, but the rest of them not really. So it was fun to just see a tail beast just out on its own, not part of a Jinchuriki, not a Jinchuriki like transformation, power up or anything like that, just the tail beast as a beast, giant in the world. It was really cool to see the team up of Gara and Shikaku previously together, now separate but still working well together here. Shikaku doing the big attacks and then Gara sort of uh, filling in with the more quick attacks. Really actually cool action sequence, getting to see sort of Gara do some really big and complicated sand maneuvers. And in the end, resulting in the temporary sealing of Urashiki in the uh, what uh, giant uh, sand mausoleum seal. That is going to last for a certain amount of time, but not forever. So Urashiki is going to break out, and this prompts the episode to happen, which is Gara sending Borto, Shinki, and Konkuro on the mission to bring Shukaku to the Leaf Village to be protected from Urashiki. So, that is the setup. The The question, I think, with this episode, as well as uh, the arcs, the rest of this arc as it goes forward, is how important in the end is it going to be? And I think a lot of that is going to come down to how they choose to resolve, or at least with by the end of this arc, what, where is Urashiki at the end of this arc? Do they kill him? Is he defeated? Um, does he just escape and he's off to do whatever going forward? I suppose a big question is, right now where we are in the Borto manga, is Urashiki still out there? Um, or has he been defeated in the meantime? Because like, I can see benefits both ways with the idea of having this sort of rogue Otsutsuki just on his own, doing his own thing. He's not part of a paired set like some of the other Otsutsukis are. He's just on his own collecting chakra, doing this stuff. That could be a very cool setup, but equally, I could also really appreciate the idea of just he is this Otsutsuki that is there to be defeated in the meantime before we get to the full Kara Jigen arc that the manga is focusing on right now. Um, so, yeah, the big question is when Sasuke returns and like. A lot of characters are going to get involved here. Like we're, we have Gara already, Konkuro, Tamari is going to be coming in in the next arc. Um, of course, Borto, you know, Sasuke. We're going back to where Naruto is, so like Naruto can get involved in this. Plus the whole Leaf Village, basically. We can bring a lot of characters into play here. That we could have enough firepower here, basically, to defeat Urashiki if we absolutely needed to here. But will they make the decision to kind of pull the trigger on something kind of that big in a way? Because the, the problem with Borto in these episodes that isn't adapting the manga is... Will they do something that important in an anime sort of only scenario? Or will they save all of that stuff even though it's not even set up in the manga? Like I don't think Urashiki's even been mentioned in the manga. Um... Does he even exist there? You know, like, and, and this gets into the whole continuity problem and stuff like that. So, like, is Urashiki just a character that we can deal with during this arc? That's the the big question. And I'd, I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on that. Because uh, I like Urashiki. I think a lot of people do. And I can see benefits either way for keeping him around for a long time and introducing him into the manga or just kind of dealing with him right now as a way to further build up, I suppose, the idea of like Sasuke and his hunt for the Otsutsukis to investigate them. And, you know, a lot of our characters like Naruto, Sasuke, especially having a lot of experience at this point with Otsutsukis, you know, Kaguya, Momoshiki, if Urashiki's dealt with here, then him as well all setting up the whole Jigen stuff that's happening right now in the manga. But anyway, that's just the kind of larger kind of my thoughts about where the arc 
kind of will have to go by the end because I don't think it will be just enough to have a nice character arc here for like Borto and Shinki together um, and just have that be the focus if you don't really bring Urashiki back into play you're going to lose a, a, a bunch of people I think but anyway l l let's get into the setup here so uh, uh, Urashiki is sealed away uh, temporarily Gara sends them out to uh, bring Shikaku to the Leaf Village now, a few things happen here to make this important, obviously. They can't just transport this giant Shikaku, so he's going to have to be sealed away in the sort of uh, teapot thing that they have. And so, this is a very interesting scene. It's probably my favorite one in the entire episode because I love the reference that it is to, like, original Naruto, and that being the dynamic between uh, Gara and Shikaku. Previously, you know, linked by being a, by Gara being a Jinchuriki, separated, of course, since then. But there's obviously going to be an ongoing relationship. There has to be. He's the leader of the Sand. This is the Sand's tailed beast. There has to be a dynamic here between the two of them, and it's it's an interesting one in that it's it's not full on friendship, but there is a trust. I think that you can see there. Gara putting sort of everything on the line for Shikaku. He will not let Shikaku be taken even if it means him having to sacrifice himself and I think Gara is saying that to Shikaku that I will take the full brunt of this sealing jutsu to make this happen regardless of whatever impact it has on me to protect you that hits Shikaku enough that he's willing to you know it's something he doesn't really like he doesn't like being sealed away just in like an object like this but because Gara is willing to put himself on the line for him, he's willing to take that, you know, temporary, you know, discomfort, and he just puts himself, he seals himself into the teapot. And I suppose because he does it himself, he sort of gains a level of almost like control over the thing that he's in, in that we get this kind of unique dynamic where we have like a mini Shukaku who sort of can poke his, his head, his arms and legs out of the teapot, and so his body is, you know, a teapot. It's a, it's a really fun, kind of cute uh, dynamic here, and especially with the sort of trickster personality that Shukaku has, he is a fun uh, character over the course of this episode and, and going forward as well. So they have him here, they're able to transport him, so it's Borto, Shinki, and Konkuro. And the other thing they set up here is that Gara says to, I suppose, his, his son Shinki here, uh, you have to bring Borto with you, one, because he can he's the one who can guide you around the terrain of the leaf and the fire, because that's where you have to go. But also, it's because along the way, through interacting with Borto, you'll learn that he possesses something that you lack. And this hits Shinky hard because Shinky sort of does pride himself on being sort of the best of the sh sand kind of uh, genin, chunin, whatever role they exactly are at this point. Um, he prides himself on that and being that good. And, and he sort of looks a little bit down on Borto as much as he respects Borto's, you know, fighting ability. He doesn't think that there is anything to learn from someone like Borto because they are so different. And obviously, over the course of the episode, what they get at is it's it's effectively the idea of Borto can make connections with people um, while being a little bit kind of goofy all over the place. You know, the, the sort of power that Naruto had to just kind of bring people towards himself. Borto has that in a slightly different way, but the same uh, basic idea. And again, Shinki in a similar way to Gara is sort of almost like disconnected from so many people because he's so rational, whereas with Gara it was just the sort of tragedy of his past that disconnected him from people and uh, obviously the whole idea of love being this sort of almost cursed word for him, but then him learning to see it in a better way. Uh, again, Gara's arc was amazing in the original show, but they're kind of doing a, a simpler version of that here with uh, Shinki of the idea that he's so rational he just focuses on the idea of what benefits can i get out of this he looks up at the stars doesn't see a beautiful view just sees um just sees a way to sort of lead his path in a way whereas i think the idea is that borto can see that and and, and another way that they do it in this episode is with how they both deal with shukaku borto deals with shukaku by sort of talking to him like he's been, Shukaku's been sealed away. I'm gonna at least try to talk to him. Uh, you know, it, it allows Shukaku to actually have a bit of sort of banter in a way with Borto, uh, tease him a bit with the whole "I need to pee" thing. But then it's revealed tail bees don't need to pee. And he just wanted to get away on his own. Versus Shinki, who just takes Shukaku in the pot and just hides him in his uh, kind of metal sand cloak. 
and never once interact with him. And Borto's like, really? You're just going to like ignore him this entire time? And I think that's that that's one of the differences that they're getting at here. And it's it's the idea that Borto along the way, regardless of where he is, can interact with people and gain their trust. Where Shinky isn't as able to do that because he's so... Um, he doesn't have that ability to sort of almost like emotionally connect with people as strong as like good of a leader as he is he is lacking that and so he needs to learn I suppose just the you know it's a bit corny but you know the, the power of friendship it is an important kind of theme in a way in Naruto and it is something that someone as important as Shinki does need to learn and who better than Boruto to sort of um, uh, teach that to him now, I am wondering along the way here, are we going to return to the characters that we met in the first episode of this arc, the um, the farmer and his daughter? Um, are we going to get to see those characters again? I think we might along the way. Uh, I could see that being a kind of proof of like, Borto met these people and gained their trust, even though they had no reason to trust him because of the father's view on ninjas. Shinki would not have been able to make that same connection just he wouldn't the way he is right now that could be one way to do it so I, I am interested to see what what exact way they do it how do you actually get through to Shinki to the point where he actually gets affected sort of emotionally by seeing Borto do something that he can't and something that opens the door to the idea of I need to connect with people a bit more I, it's not all about you know rationality and just being purely logical about everything what will be the the turning point in all of this so that's going to be a pretty interesting one for sure, but um, it looks like next week we are going to get uh, Shikadai and Tamari introduced into things, which made sense, because of course in the first episode of the arc, it was mentioned that uh, Shikadai and Tamari were going to the the, the land of wind, the, the sand village basically, to v- visit like Tamari's family, so him visiting the other side of his family, so um, that was a, that's a fun kind of little thing there that Shikadai is right here. Um, will he be a key player in all of this? Because again, like I suppose, going back to like the tuning exams, Sh- Shikadai, Borto, uh, Shinki—they're like three of your key players in what's going on uh, in terms of like the top recruits, basically at the tuning exam. So it makes sense to bring them all back together again. Um, and then yeah, Conqueror. Conqueror is the other uh, factor in this episode, and I-, I thought he was really cool in this episode to see him. Be that, you know, experienced Jonian character, him giving advice to both Borto and Shinki sort of separately about each other that, you know, Shinki's a person too, you know, he's he's a bit blunt, he's a bit fo- too focused on being rational, but, you know, that's just the way he is, you know, from another perspective, you're being a bit childish for, you know, almost like demanding everyone speak to you in a super, super polite way. And you have to try to understand, but from he's trying to get through to Shinki with the idea of like this is the lesson that Gar is trying to teach you here. There's more than just you know using everything as a tool effectively. That you can you not just appreciate the wonder in a way connection to someone. Uh, so what will be the thing to finally break through? Uh, but yeah, significantly, uh, what happens is that the Toneri puppets, which Urashiki had stolen, of course wake up again, they follow them, Konkuro stays behind to have a puppet versus puppet battle with them as Boruto and Shinki are allowed to go off on their own back to the Leaf Village. So we end the episode with the setup for a big puppet showdown, Konkuro versus all these Toneri puppets, which is, I think, going to be pretty cool. I'm excited to see Konkuro, you know, older Konkuro go all out using all the different puppets, just see what level he's at at this point. Um... And so on, like, it, like obviously the 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 best comparison is obviously going to be to like Sassari, um, from the Akatsuki, uh, who was like our previous like Max Puppet Master type character. What way is he going to be like here? Uh, he was already really good, like towards the end of the war, where the little bits we got to see of him. So, what's he going to be like now as an adult? Uh, but yeah, it seems like the next episode is going to be focused on that fight a lot. But they're going to have to co- cover where what's next for uh, Borto and Shinki. But, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to say about the episode. Uh, it itself, I think, um, last episode obviously was a kind of mixed bag in that it was a very, like, mundane, sort of almost dull arc until right at the end they dropped everything on you. This is, like, the most important arc ever. This one was more of just, like, okay, 
this is what most of this arc is going to be. It's not going to be five or six episodes just focused on Urashiki or even Sasuke or even Gara. In the end, the focus is on Boruto and Shinki, I think, primarily, using Shikaku as this kind of other angle in there, and then we'll eventually get back around to, you know, Sasuke and those likes coming back into play. But again, that's where the importance of the arc is going to be right at the end, what they do or do not do with Urashiki. But uh, yeah, a uh, final talking point is just about uh, Tail Beasts, I think, is the main thing to discuss here, in that I think... In all of this, it is weird. I, I don't really know what way the world is meant to... How much the world is meant to know about Tail Beasts. We've seen in previous episodes that there are toys and stuff like that made of the Tail Beasts. So people know the names of at least a couple of them. Kurama and uh, Shukaku had uh, toys made of him. So those two, we know people like Himo- Himawari uh, n- knew of them. Uh, that 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 fun episode with Naruto and Himawari getting the toys. We saw that there were toys of these these things. So everyone knows what they are. I was a little surprised to see Borto not be incredibly overawed by the fact that he's holding a tail beast in his hand, and uh, like like it was just sort of every day to him. Whereas they were previously the most secretive, important things in the world, and he's just like, "Hey, look at Shikaku. Let's have fun with him." Um. And again, I, I think it still remains this thing of like, does Borto know exactly about Naruto's powers that like Kurama is literally inside him? Like, I, I think it should be difficult to not see it that way, given that he's seen Naruto use the full extent of his powers and how Kurama-esque he looks. But I, I, I think we're kind of just missing this kind of conversation almost where Borto literally just comes out and asks like Naruto, uh, do you have a tail beast inside you? And get just the confirmation about that either way. Because it's the same with like Himawari. Like does she know that Kurama is inside Naruto? Or like how much of a secret does Naruto have to keep of that? Like it's his abilities. But for the most part you never really see him do it. Where it just looks so overtly like Kurama. And that's probably my biggest question in all of this. uh, In that like. Is it, is it ever going to come to light that Shukaku was in Gar- Gara at one point? Uh, and I'm, 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 one, I'm half wondering, like, will that arc come up? I, I think it probably will be. Like, if maybe if Konkuro catches up with them, uh, someone will tell Shinki and Borto the, the tale of, I suppose, how Naruto and uh, Gara became friends and stuff like that. Uh, that could be quite interesting. But, um, yeah, I, I, I just... Uh, a little confused about wh- how exactly the world is on Tail Beast right now. Okay, their existence is known, but the importance, the sec- secretiveness, of, and stuff like that about them is that there. Uh, I think another point a lot of people are making out is that wait, Naruto should be able to gain connection to all of the other Tail Beasts since there's like a part of their chakra inside him. He has Kurama inside him, but he also has an aspect of all of the other Tail Beasts as well. That's why he's able to use all of those kind of crazy jutsu if he goes full power. He's able to use the sort of lava release of this character and and this Tail Beast and so on. Um... Shikaku should be able to gain some level of communication to Naruto through the tail beast sort of connection, but they didn't really bring that up. Maybe it's Shikaku just being, you know, a troll and all of this, but um, I assume something important will happen with Shikaku. But uh, yeah, that's my review. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this one, but that's been my thoughts. That's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.